Over the past 38 years, Spartan cows decreased over 59%. That means at this rate, your mother is probably not gonna have food for much longer. And I mean, no need to bring your mother into this because really we're talking about you and how you can increase your Spartan count. All right, so these seven tactics are gonna help you do that and do so much more. Tactic number one, if you're sitting like this, don't. Instead, let them breathe. First things first is when you compress your gonads, you're gonna have issues, right? You're gonna have decreased blood flow and your sperm count is gonna be decreased, right? So what you wanna do is man spread a bit, right? Let it flow, let it loose, okay? What we don't want is tidy whities, right? Instead go for the boxers, right? Let them breathe, let them flow, it's good, right? We wanna have blood flow down there so we can increase our sperm count, so then it's gonna increase our testosterone, which is what we're working for as well. Good side effect. But if you want them to breathe, let them breathe. Man spread. Someone says something different, just say, yo, dude, I'm increasing my testosterone. Also, we're gonna tie that into sleep. Just think about it, when you're sleeping, you're open up, back down, you're good. You sleep on your side and you compress, no good. That ties us directly into our next tactic. Tactic number two is sleep. Studies show that if you get less than six hours of sleep, you're 31% chance less likely to get your partner pregnant than if you get more than that, okay? But going too much, too far, is not gonna be good as well. Because if you do more than eight hours of sleep, you get nine, 10, 11 hours of sleep, you're also gonna see decrease in sperm count. And so there's a golden zone that we need to sit at between seven and eight hours, right? You've probably heard it before, seven to eight hours of sleep is what we all need, right? There's reasons for that. Fertility is one of those reasons, right? If we wanna increase our sperm count and help our swimmers get to where they need to, we gotta get adequate amount of sleep each and every night so our body's recovered and fully optimizing so we can reproduce more. Because in the end, it's what we wanna do. Brings us into our next tactic. Tactic number three is gonna be getting your vitamins and nutrients. And yes, hold on, hold on, I know, I know. Everyone's like, get your vitamins and nutrients. But specifically, you're probably eating stuff like this. Cereals, any kind of processed foods. And this is great, it's all good, you know, like you can get calories from it. But what it's doing is decreasing your sperm count, right? And that's exactly what we don't want. We wanna increase our fertility. And so, what are some vitamins that you can use to increase that? What's well, gonna be zinc, it's gonna be magnesium, vitamin D3, all of these Vitamins are going to be essential to increasing your sperm count and allowing you to be fertile. But you don't have to take supplements. You don't have to go and get vitamins from an actual pill form. No, there's great ways to do that from whole foods. All right, beef liver is a prime, prime whole food that you can incorporate in your diet and it's automatically going to increase your fertility and allow you to get a couple more swimmers. On to that next one. Tactic number four is going to be insulin. And this ties directly into our last topic that we talked about, which is processed foods, right? So insulin specifically, you look at stuff like this. This is sugars. See, what insulin does is it helps fight back and break down the sugars. And so when you have increased insulin, what you're going to have is an increase in that fighting power to break down the sugars. If you have insulin reduced, then your body's not going to be able to fight those processed sugars. And that instead is going to get turned into fat. And now your body stores that fat. And what happens is now you're going to increase your estrogen levels. You see, we don't want our estrogen levels increased because what that does is that allows the female reproductive system to work. See, we're trying to work our male reproductive system. And so we need to increase testosterone. And so if we're having female estrogen working, testosterone is going to decrease. And so we want our sperm count to go up, so we get rid of that stuff. We get rid of insulin spikes. What we do is we eat things that allow our body to increase the testosterone. And so all this being said, it's going to get us into our next tactic. Next tactic is gonna be temperature. And I'm not talking about cold, no. For this, I'm talking specifically about heat. All right, there's a reason why your gonads on the outside of your body, unlike all your other organs. You need exposure to cold. The sperm count is produced the best at 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? That means that your body elevates about 97, 98 degrees. Where you need your gonads is a lot lower. And so having a lot of heat exposure is gonna reduce your fertility. It's gonna reduce your sperm count. So there's a reason why guys go out and do ice plunges, cold baths, whatever it is, because that's gonna increase their testosterone, and increase their sperm count. See, if you go the other way, and instead of getting the hot tub, getting hot showers, yes, hot showers are gonna do it. And if you're gonna be out in your car, and you're gonna be driving around, and it's a cold winter day, you turn that heat seat around, Yes, yes, there are factors to that too. So be cautious of heating down there. Instead, try to stick with something a little bit colder. Tactic number six, tied directly into the last tactic, which is gonna be heat and electronics. See, when you have your laptop and you're working on it like this, what it's doing is directly heating up your gonads and also gonna be emitting a frequency from the electronic device itself. There's not much studies on this, but when it comes to electronics, there is a frequency that is emitted by all these devices, being Wi-Fi, being cellular data, or whatever it is. And when you have that close to your organs, it disrupts that. 
disrupts the process, the natural process that is our body, producing the stuff that needs to, reproductive systems and fertility and sperm count. And so next time you're thinking about putting your phone or your laptop in your area, try not to, right? Instead, opt for putting your phone in your back pocket. Right, tactic number seven and the last one is gonna be reducing your stress, okay? Stress is directly linked to cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that our body produces. The more stress that we get under, and yes, there's stress with exercise, and yes, there's stress with daily functions like getting on social media and seeing all this stuff that goes on in the world or media and news in general where you see basically the world's ending, right? All of this is stress, and there's a big amount of it, and there's good stress and there's bad stress. We wanna avoid the bad stress and go more towards good stress. Go towards working out. Doing hard things, doing things, putting yourself, building discipline. Because the bad stress in the increases in cortisol is going to directly link to decreases in your sperm count, decreases in your fertility. See, we want to try to exercise more and help our hormones increase. Things like testosterone, right? Where they increase and your bodily functions work better. Because if we have an increase in cortisol, then our body goes into fight mode. Right? It goes into the mode where, hey, instead of trying to reproduce, we're instead just going to try to survive. And so in this video, we talked a lot about sperm count, how to increase your sperm count. But guys, there's other stuff to this, like testosterone, increasing your testosterone, your hormones overall for your male body and specifically. So if you want to see a video on increasing your testosterone, go ahead and click this one.